All right, so now that you know the basics of how we can access Handbrake um, in Python, let's make it a little more useful and have it loop through a directory and just convert everything in that directory. So we need to make a variable called input uh, directory. You can call this whatever you want, but it just needs to be a path to where all the videos are. So for example, I'm actually gonna delete these two converted MP4 files. So we don't need those. And let me just rename this to um, just two. So this is gonna be our starting point. So wherever all the files are, we just need that here. And for now, let me comment these two lines out. And we're gonna import OS because we need to work with the OS, fu uh, OS functions. And let's just say um, directory list equals os.lister. So this is gonna list the directory and we're gonna list the input directory. So let's just print that out, make sure we see what we expect. Okay, so we see all of the files and we notice that it's just the file name. So we actually need to get the full path. Um, so we can do that by making another variable called full path equals os.path.join. And we're gonna join the input directory with the um, with this file. But actually, before we do that, we need to loop through this directory list. So for file in directory list, print file. So let me just show you what that does. So now we have the files like that. So we don't need to print this anymore. So now we can join them. So we can say uh, OS dot, or let's say full path. I was actually starting to do it down here. Input directory and then join the file. So let's print, instead of printing file, let's print full path. Print full path. Let's try that out. Okay, so now we have um, every file is being listed, but we want to only worry about AVI files. So let's put an if statement in here and say, if full path dot ends, ends with dot AVI, then print the full path. So hopefully this, this time it's not gonna print that exe file. All right, so now we just have the AVI files we're interested in. So now we're ready to execute our um, our commands here, our uh, handbrake commands. So let me uncomment this and indent this because we only want to execute this if it meets this criteria. And now we need to dynamically um, input this or change this input right here, right? Because right now it's hard coded. We want it to be whatever is looping through. So the first time it loops through, it'll be this and it'll use that as input. Then the second time it loops through, it'll use this as input. So let's just get rid of this. And still in a string, I'm gonna use something called f strings. And f strings basically just allow you to put a variable in a string. So you just make a string and put an f in front of it and then use these curly braces. And then in the curly braces, you can put a variable. So we want the full path right there. All right, so full path is this. And now we need the output path, okay? So right now, it, this is also hard coded. So we're gonna make this an F string. And we need to construct some sort of output path. So how are we gonna do that? So there's like a million different ways you could do this, but I think the easiest is just going to be to replace the AVI with .mp4. 
So we can just in here say full path, which we know is this. And as long as you want this to be in the same exact location, which is what I want, I, I just want it to be right next to this. All we can do is just say dot replace. And we're gonna, what are you gonna replace? That's gonna be the first input. We're gonna replace dot AVI. Why does that look weird? Dot replace. I actually don't know why it doesn't like this. So I think it has, has something to do with the F string. So I'm not going to use an F string here, actually. Let's just use string formatting. So we can just say dot format and then say uh, full path dot replace. And this is what I was trying to do with the F string AVI with dot mp4 and we can put a zero here if we want but we don't have to actually all right so i that makes sense i think that makes sense to you guys so we're just saying this is the output and we're giving it a variable which is full path and we're just replacing avi with mp4 all right, so let's say um, print converting um, to dot mp4 dot format full path. And then we can say print finish convert. Print done. All right, so now let's let's try this. Give this a, a whirl. So we can see it said it was converting. Converting. Where'd that go? Converting to MP4. Cool. So I'm just gonna pause it and let it convert, and then I'll show you when it picks up the second video. All right, so we got about 15 seconds left. Let's just check the CPU and let's just make sure when this finishes, we should see it start to convert this, the next video. Okay. So that happened really fast. Finish converting. Okay. Finish converting. Now it's converting gokart underscore two AVI to MP4. And we can see that it's, it's converting it. So that's pretty useful. And if we look at the output directory, you see, we have two MP4s, one for the first one, one for the second one. And cool, so that is very useful. I'm just gonna go ahead and kill this because we don't need it to run all the way through. And I just wanna show you one alternative way of converting. Uh, and this is the way I actually found out how to do it first and then later I finished or I realized we could, we could use this subprocess.run. But the way I originally was going about doing this, I was using something called subprocess.popen. So let's just comment that out. And this is the code that I was using before. So it was, I was um, creating a variable called process equals subprocess dot P open. And the differences between run and P open aren't a hundred percent clear to me, but um, this, it's just, it's, it's handling, um, some low level stuff a little differently and you can Google it, but, uh, for, for my purposes, the runs probably good enough, but I just wanted to share this cause the output looks a little bit different. Uh, the shell output looks a little different. So we're just going to give it the, um, the handbrake command, just like we did with the other one. And we're going to specify what we want our standard output to be. So we want that to go to sub process dot pipe. I don't know why that keeps popping up subprocess.pipe and then standard error. So any error messages, we want those to, uh, it's so annoying this thing, sub standard error. 
Go to sub process. Dot standard output. Universal new lines is true. All right. And we're going to loop through this output. So you'll see what I mean, like what, how the output looks a little bit different. So let's just run this and see what happens. Oh, well, it's because I have it. This is, oh, I must have typed something. Oh, I forgot the D here. Okay, there we go. So it's basically giving us more output, like every single second it's returning information. So this may or may not be useful information to you, um, but something else that it changed. So you see, I don't know if you remember, but before when we used it last time, all of this information was in red. And I think it was because it was treated as um, a, a different um, standard output. It was, I think, an error maybe. So PyCharm interpreted it a little bit differently. So it made it red, but now it's it's white. So, you know, very subtle differences, but I, I thought I'd mention uh, to you guys, because this is what I used originally. Uh, they both work. It, it really is up to you. Um, and yeah, that, that's pretty much all I wanted to show you guys. I did create a uh, much more robust script to, to handle the um, the project that I was working on myself, and that is available on GitHub. And I'll also put this code on GitHub too, and you guys can cherry pick uh, what, what kind of stuff that you want. Um, but the other script I made, for example, has like, it has a, a logging feature, so it creates a log file, and um, it's just a little more robust. Um, but yeah, uh, thanks for watching, and if you liked it, please uh, thumbs up and, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.